Hi folks, I'm Steve at Silver Beehive Studio. Um, I use the J2R, NewTek J2R casting machine, and I've had a number of people on Instagram ask me questions about it, so I thought I'd make a, a video basically on how I set it up and how I use it. Um, I have not really touched the machine at all in three weeks since I cast last, and so you'll be kind of following along with me and going through the things that I go through when I start it. So first of all, um, the machine, the model that I have is a J2R CE, which I have no idea what that stands for. Um, and I bought it used on eBay uh, through two years ago. Uh, I'm casting sterling silver at 1735 degrees Fahrenheit. And my flask temperature that I'm using out of the kiln um, is 975 degrees Fahrenheit um, after a two hour soak. I'm using um, six inch flask, larger flask, so I do a little bit longer soak for most of those things. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm getting ready to cast for the day is I'm going to take the top of the machine off right here. Um, when I'm finished casting and the flask is, is hot, red, red hot, orange hot, I take it off and I set it in, um, in this container which came with the machine. So, um, so I've already opened that machine up when it was hot the last time I cast and set it in here so that it can cool down in an, um, in an oxygen-free environment. It quickly, I think, uses up all the oxygen in there. And so um, the advantage of doing that is if you, uh, if you put it in this container, you don't have to have the gas running as long um, to keep the oxygen away from the, the uh, graphite crucible. So let's take this off and we'll take a look here. Um, yeah. So you want to be really gent gent gentle here because the two parts that drop down um, into the casting unit are both made of graphite and so they're fragile and you run the risk of uh, snapping them off if you're not really careful. So um, if you're not familiar with how this works, this center piece right here um, is basically um, a plug or a plunger which goes right into the center of the uh, crucible and plugs it and the metal melts and then when you're ready to cast you lift that up and it opens it just like a valve on a sink and um, goes straight down um, into your mold um, let's see here so um, what i'm looking for now is i'm coming back over here and making sure that i um, have all the pieces back in place because when i take it out i'll take this ceramic collar off so that's actually in place and the next thing i'm looking at is the is the gasket that's made out of I think that's um, refractory to make sure that that area is pretty clean. Um, there's a little bit of crud in there and I'm just going to feel it with my fingers and make sure, just kind of brush it off to kind of clean it, make sure there's no chunks sitting in there. Okay, good. So that looks and feels good. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the crucible. And you got to do this kind of funky. You got to kind of spread your fingers to hold it and gently set it right down in place. And this has got to be right in the middle to line up with that graphite plunger piece that goes in the middle. Okay, that feels good. So now I'm going to put the um, ceramic cone in place. This is to kind of direct your metal when you add your metal to the chamber. And... Now I'm going to do a visual inspection on these rods right here. Um, I can see that, that this rod is starting to deteriorate. It's, it's narrower than it is up top. I think I can probably get another one out of it. I'll probably change it after this casting though. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but it looks it is narrower, more narrow than... Um, you know what? I'm going to... Now nah, I, I, I'll do it for one more time. The other rod right here is a stirring rod and um, you use that to stir the metal when you're casting and you want to make sure that that's dropped all the way down so it's actually touching the crucible. So very gently I'm lowering this in here. I've got the um, I've got this this piece retracted. This is the arm that actually um, lowers it down and plugs it. I've got this little lever up here so it's not sitting down all the way. It's held up out of the way and now I'm going to lock this in place. Good. And now, uh, using the flashlight that is that phone, so I can't actually do it, I'm going to check and see how well this sits in there. So I'm going to unlock this. I'm going to let that come down. And I can feel, I can see and feel that it's directing right to the center and it, and it feels good. You want this to be about halfway 
down so that when um, so there's still plenty of spring tension on it that's pushing down and also there's plenty of room when you release it for the metal to flow out the bottom okay the other piece um, that's you need to know about that center plug and there's a name for this I'm, I'm calling it a plug I know that's not the right term is that it's hollow and one of the major advantages of this particular casting machine is that this probe which measures the temperature of your metal goes right down into the middle of the pool of metal. It's inside that graphite um, rod. And so I'm gonna drop this down in there and I'm gonna plug it in. So that should be good to go as well. Okay. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the chamber and make sure that things are squared away inside of there. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna look down in here. Okay, so this Oh, um, for the couple of years that I've had it, I've definitely had some problems with this part right here. So this is a uh, O-ring right here, a neoprene O-ring. Um, and when that gets too hot, when the flask is sitting on this at 975 degrees, that um, can expand, it can pop out. And if that bulges or pops out, you've lost your seal, you've lost your vacuum. So you're no longer vacuum casting, that's really bad. So. Uh, between every cast that I do, I really inspect that, um, that O-ring and make sure it's in good shape. I also use a graphite O-ring. Uh, Newtech sells this through Rio Grande, and, um, and this helps protect it as well. This sits right on top of it, but you can see that's starting to delaminate, but I think it's still good for another, for another session. So that looks good to me. Um, when you take your flask out, um, let me grab a flask. Actually, when you put your flask into the kiln for uh, the night before for burnout, you want to check this flange right here because sometimes investment can, can be on this ring right here. And if there's a blob of investment on there and you don't, you don't catch it and you set it on there, you're not going to get a good tight seal. So before you even put it in the kiln, make sure that that is nice and clean. <clears throat> All right, so that looks good to me. Um, next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that my vacuum valve is closed and I'm going to turn my vacuum on just to check it and make sure that, um, oh, that's, that's why I check it because it's not plugged in right now. So I'll plug that in in a moment and I'll check it again. Um, next thing I'm going to do before I'm ready to switch it on, to turn it on, I'm going to come over here and get my gas squared away. So I'm using nitrogen. Um, I did have one person say they were using argon and I think that's totally kosher except argon is way more expensive. Uh, nitrogen is way cheaper, so uh, I would not recommend using argon. It, it will work fine. They're both inert gases. But um, So I'm going to turn this on. I've got plenty of gas right here. Um, and I can't remember what they recommend um, to put it in here. But I'm running, let's see, between uh, maybe three. Yeah, three is it PSI? I can't tell. I guess it's bar. Um, Ten PSI. Um, and then I'm going to come over to the machine and there's a little float valve right here, a little float bubble right here. And I'm going to turn that on and bring that up to five liters per minute. Okay. So now that all that's um, on and good, I'm going to turn the machine on the switch down here, Christy. Um, oh yeah, there's the, there are the pieces. There's a sticker right here to tell you the pick. So there's the filling cone, the graphite crucible, the crucible stand, um, and the stand gasket. Okay, yeah. So uh, if you look up here, you can see um, on the controller right here, it tells you what the current temperature is inside the flask and with the probe down in there and what your um, set um, temperature is, which is 1735. This machine will take about a half an hour to warm up initially, and then you only need 10 minutes or slightly less than 10 minutes between flasks once it's up to temperature. So um, I'll get that uh, pump plugged in and we'll come back when we're ready to cast. Okay, so um, when you cast, the central part uh, that the metal feeds your models with is called the sprue, and the sprue actually equals at least half of the weight of all the metal that you're using. So there's a lot of silver here, so you want to use that again. I use about 50% recycled um, silver from previous casts and then 50% new casting grade. The way that I have come to cut this up so I can get it back in there to cast it is with a 
a pair of bolt cutters. I just have a pair of bolt cutters and I chuck it into the vise over here and, um, and put the uh, screw in there and just pull down hard and I can cut it up that way. So the top of the sprue is called the button. Um, it's, it's round and it's too fat to drop down into the crucible to melt. So I have, happen to have a shop press and I just take those uh, button pieces and I put them in the press and I crush them down so that they're now flat and they slip right in now. So um, that's what I do to get, re get the recycled metal ready to um, melt down again. Okay, so the um, casting machine is now warmed up. Um, it's uh, actually above 1735 and, um, and so now we're ready to add the metal. The chamber inside, the, one of the greatest things about this machine is that everything happens in a relatively oxygen-free environment. So nitrogen is bathing all of the operations inside this super hot um, chamber. And we want to kind of minimize how long we leave the door open because we're letting some oxygen in there. Um, so we don't want to leave that open for too long. So I've got two different kinds of metal that I'm adding. I've got casting grain and I've got recycled metal. And so I'm gonna start with the recycled metal and make sure that that gets dropped down and um, is going to the bottom as much as, as much as I can. So here we go. Here's that button I talked about. Good, that dropped down. Sometimes it doesn't drop down all the way and you have to kind of poke it with a pair of pliers. Kind of like that one piece right there. There we go. Okay, now the casting grain. And now we look at the temperature. So this is going to drop right down to like 1400 degrees um, very quickly. Maybe, maybe lower than that. Um, and then it will s slowly start to increase. Um, and you really want to keep your eye on it. It does not take as long as you think it will. It's maybe 10 minutes before you're ready to cast. So, um, so now it's kind of a waiting game. I'm kind of setting up my, my, my area over here. So um, I'm moving um, the, the pieces away that held the casting grain. Is still going? Um, and now I've got a little cushion. This is refractory right here so that I, when I when I pull the flask out of the kiln I'll set it on this soft cushion right here uh, right side up and um, so I don't want to jar it or, or, or bump it if I bump it I might break it um, or break that um, that fragile investment uh, I'm also getting my tong make sure my tongs are ready today I've got an assistant so she'll open, work the door of the kiln it's really nice to have someone open and close the door of the kiln um, that sometimes I don't have that luxury. Usually I don't have that luxury. Um, opening the chamber, making sure that's ready. Um, that's good to go. The valve is closed. Um, yep, I think things are pretty good. So what? Um, right down here, Christy. Um, I pull. Um, I pull the the uh, flask out of the kiln around 1600 degrees and set it down here, reposition my tongs, set it in there, and then at about 1675, I open the valve for the vacuum. So it has about uh, maybe 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds with the vacuum on before I actually cast. Good. Yep. Not just yet. I'm going to wait a little bit longer on the first one because it's, it's going to be a little bit As it's warming up more, but it's the way the metals are sitting in there that it's not getting a good reading on it. They look like they're fusing together, though. Yeah, okay. Can you stir it? Yeah, it's not that big. Here we go. Are you ready on the film board? D, letter D. Okay, do it. D. Can I close it?
Okay, so a lot happens really quickly. Um, closely watching the temperature right here. As soon as it hits 1735 on the way up, that's when I open it. You saw me stirring it using this lever back here to stir it rapidly um, as soon as it became liquid. And open the vacuum before all that happened. Um, that can be shut off now. I can open this chamber up and you see the shot has been successful. It's down inside. And I'll give this to Christy. And I'm just going to pull this out. Set it down. There's so many things that I'm watching for. One of them is when I open the when I open the vacuum valve, I'm watching this needle and I want to make sure that that's pulling a vacuum. If that only goes part way or it doesn't go hardly at all, that means that that seal, that gasket that I talked about earlier is not seated properly or something in there is allowing the vacuum to bypass it. So at that point, if that happens, then I put the flask back into the kiln. I chill out. Um, I open this up and I try and figure out why I'm not pulling a vacuum. Don't do it anyway. Um, you have time. You've got metal in there that's melting. That's probably not great for it, but remember it's in an oxygen-free environment. It's probably going to be fine, um, but you want to figure out why you're not pulling a vacuum. Um, I've only cast one, one flask so far, but um, I do, um, when I cast the second or the third one, that's when this gasket right here will really start to heat up. And I just want to keep checking it. It's seated all the way around. You'll see a bulge in there if it doesn't, um, if it's not seating properly. That's a, that can be a big problem if you're not really on top of that. <clears throat> Replacing that, that gasket pretty regularly too. Uh, sometimes I'll leave this open to kind of cool that chamber down a little bit uh, once it gets good and hot. Still see chunks. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, it's starting to go. Yeah. Starting to go. Up a little bit. There go. Yep. Put your hand on that lever. Not yet. Oh yeah. Still see got one more chunk to go. Okay, it's starting to go. Okay, I think now I can stir. Yep. So just... Yep, faster, back and forth. Yep, that's good. Okay, 17, 10, 15, keep going faster. 25, 30, okay, stop. And down it goes to the left. Okay, so this one has been sitting here for about 10 minutes. Um, the other one has just been cast and uh, is waiting to come over. So I, this is one I'll quench this one. And you want to get it underwater. Uh, if you see any steam coming up, it could have silica in it. And so you want to keep it under the bottom. I agitate it so the water gets in there. You can feel it kind of vibrating as it's boiling. As soon as it stops kind of vibrating, it's done boiling, and out she comes. I don't see any immediate issues with air bubbles. Thank God. There's a little bit. Yeah, no, there's some. Not too bad. Okay, good.